This video will not include the rule of thirds, leading lines, framing, or any of the usual suspects when it comes to composition. Now, don't get me wrong, these are all fantastic tools that all of us use all the time. However, there is a bit more to composition in my opinion, and I wanna share with you extra tips, suggestions, things you can try that will definitely improve your composition and improve how you look at composition. Now, this video is also sponsored by Squarespace, but I'll talk more about them later on. Let's start with Edge Patrol. Now with this particular one, you can actually fix it later on in editing. However, if you can get it right in camera, it'll just make your life so much easier. So what do I mean by that? Basically, look around the edge of your frame, be it on the back of the screen or in Lightroom, and see, is there anything that's poking in? Is it like a random branch or a random crane or just something that's poking in and messing up the composition and distracting the viewer and or yourself from what the image is about. Because you can have the most minimal, simplistic, fantastic composition, but if you have things sticking in and out of the sides and the edges of your image, it's just gonna look messy, distracting, and just not very clean overall. However, if it's like more than, let's say, 30, 40, 50%, then chances are I'll just leave it there because it's becoming a part of the composition itself. And I just have to make sure that that works with the rest of the image. Now, in terms of how to remove it, obviously in camera, you can just move yourself so you can either get closer, further away, change the composition. Now, if you can't change the composition or it messes up the sort of the big picture, so to speak, or you just spot it late when you're editing, you can crop the image or you can clone um, the branch or the crane or whatever it is out uh, completely. Another thing that you can do is just change how you're looking at a particular scene. Because if you're just looking at it for your eyes and then you take a picture, sometimes there might be a bit of a disconnect between what you see and what comes on the back of the camera. Now, it's not just the composition, there's lighting and other aspects that go into it, but you can help yourself in terms of getting an idea of whether a scene that you're looking at will roughly translate into a photo. Now, there are three different ways of doing this, depends on your personality and how you take photos, you can pick the best one. So one of them is to simply just close one of the eyes. And if a scene still looks interesting with just one eye, chances are you're onto something. Now, another thing you can do is just take a photo on your phone and then instantly have a look at it, zoom in and ask yourself, does it actually look good? Does the composition work? If it does, again, you might be onto something. Personally, I don't do those two things. I just don't use the viewfinder and I use the back of the screen. Any of you who've been out with me taking photos or you've seen me taking photos, I would always, if we pretend this is a camera, right? I would always kind of hold it up and before I take a photo, I would like readjust it, move it around and I would always use the screen over the viewfinder. And the reason for it, as well as just kind of blending in and looking like a tourist, but it's also to like, you know, if it looks good on the back of a small crappy Fujifilm screen, chances are it would look good when it's on a proper monitor or printed or when you're actually like editing it and whatnot. And I always readjust the composition on the back of the screen and I judge the scene based on what it looks like on the back of the camera and not what it looks like in real life when I look at it with my two eyes. Now I made a whole separate video going into a lot of detail about balance and weight. I'll link it down below. I do suggest watching it because it will help put a lot more into context. But for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna just skim over it at a very high level. So if you look at a photo, okay, ask yourself a few questions. So the first question is, what am I looking at first? Let's just say it's a red bus, okay? Is that the subject? If the answer is yes, wicked. If the answer is no and you're looking at the sky instead of the red bus and you don't want to look at the sky, then there might be something off about the image and that's where balance comes in. Another thing you should ask yourself is, is the image pulling me to the left or to the right? Are my eyes rolling off the top, rolling off the bottom? Does the image feel like it's bottom heavy, top heavy, left heavy or right heavy? You see, when you look at a scene, there are different factors that make up a typical scene. You have highlights, bright colors, shadows, details, and negative space. Each one of these aspects has its own weight. 
weight means your attention. So a bright area will have more weight because it takes more of your attention. That's why people look at bright red colors or just bright sky in general. A shadow area will take less weight because there's not much going on there. So when you're balancing an image out, you're effectively saying, is there enough shadow to counterbalance the amount of sky that you have in the image because if not the image will be completely skewed and it'll be off balance and no amount of leading lines rule of thirds of framing will fix that issue and again if you've seen me take photos in real life you would see that i'm always kind of doing that and just messing around with the composition all i'm doing is i'm just trying to balance the composition out because if it looks balanced and it looks good on the back of the phone or on the back of this camera then chances are it would work out when i get it into lightroom later on at this point i would like to thank the sponsor of this video squarespace squarespace is my main portfolio where people come to see my best work i have full control of how my work is presented and interacted with. Squarespace is also the hub for my business, my newsletter, and my travel photography blog. Finally, I use Squarespace as my social media landing page and my digital business card. Whether you're a beginner or a pro, having your own website is never a bad idea. So if this is something that interests you, click the link below to get a free trial followed by 10% off your first purchase. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring and thank you for watching. Now this one is a little bit subjective and I'm not gonna lie, it doesn't work all the time because there are many photos I've taken where I've not followed this particular rule, yet they worked out well. However, in general, you wanna have that subject at the bottom right of your image or at the very least looking into the middle of the image. So yeah, whenever you're composing, try and put your subject somewhere in the bottom right. But again, don't you know break your back trying to do it because if it doesn't work, it doesn't work and I've got many images where that's not the case and they work out perfectly. Um, and if you do have subjects, uh, such as a person or a car or whatever the subject is, just try your best to make sure they're facing into the middle of the uh, frame for the most natural image. Now sure, if you're trying to create some kind of tension or a very, let's say, unnerving feeling within your image, then having someone look out of the edge can definitely unbalance the photo and make you feel that. But in general, I try things to kind of be going into the uh, middle of the uh, frame. Okay, we're now into the final section, which is definitely the most practical one, but it'll also take you the longest to achieve. And that is to keep coming back to the same locations in your town, city, village, wherever you happen to live and shoot the same compositions over and over again. Now, the reason you wanna do it is because the way you look at compositions now will be different to how you look at compositions in three years time. So a particular location where you, let's say you worked it to death and you're like, there's definitely no more photos here. I'll bet you that when you come back in two, three years time, you'll be like, oh my God, I didn't realize there's this composition here or that composition there. You see, the better you get, the more you will see, or you'll certainly look at things very differently. And when you keep coming back to the same particular location, you'll just start to see things in a different way. That's one of the reasons why whenever I'm in London, I tend to go to the same places. And in most cases, I'll get nothing new, but in some cases I'll be walking and let's say the light's a bit different or the weather's a bit different. And I'm just like, actually, how did I not see this before? This is a fantastic composition and I take a photo. And over time, I'm sure as I, as I keep coming back to London in three, four, five years, I will see new compositions that I didn't see today. So think of it as like a longer term project of a particular city town where you live, and then it will definitely help you improve over time. Okay, I've definitely been waffling for a while, so if you're still here, thank you very much for watching. Um, let me know what you think about what I've discussed. Is it good? Is it bad? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you have your own composition tips that you can share and help others too? Comment section is for all of that, so I look forward to reading them. Thank you ever so much again, and I'll see you in the next video.